welcome to this webinar. We're going to talk about um, Developer's Guide to Multi-Cloud API Operations with Con Connect. Uh, very mouthful. Uh, and we're going to be covering a lot of things. Um, for those of you who first time join us for Tech Talk, my name is Viktor Gamov. I work here as a developer advocate with Kong, focusing on you know everything, uh, starting from gateway to uh, service mesh to um, talking about like microservices developers uh, and uh, and obviously Kong Connect, uh, with, which we're going to be focused on today. Let me know in the comments uh, what are your expectations of here. So you're a developer, so it's it was tainted for developers. And I'm trying to explain a little bit on uh, operation side of things and how we operate in gateways and how the people operate in gateways, um, and why um, why you need you know things like connect. So that's my quick agenda. Um, things we can we can have uh, multiple turns depend on the questions that might have. But essentially, I would like to um, talk a little bit about the why developers should care about connect, or like if you're not aware about connect. Uh, why are you sleeping on this? Why are you missing out with the um, learning about Connect? Um, we're gonna we're gonna use very exciting technology to explore today. So um, I was very inspired by internal presentation um, that my team were doing uh, with some of the Chat GPTs and Open uh, AI APIs. So we're gonna look into. Uh, building blocks of this chat GPT. We're going to look into text uh, completion API, how we can use it and how we can turn it into something that will be consumable within the organization. Something that a Quant Connect platform will allow to uh, configure and we're going to play around with the um, the the gateway side of things. And uh, we're going to cover some of the basic use cases like uh, defining uh, routes, defining a uh, some of the like simple uh, simple plugins to more advanced uh, rate limiting capabilities based on consumer groups. How about that? This is very inspirational slide. There's a lot of things going on here. And this is something that I will show in the very beginning to give you kind of like a roadmap where we go in with all this. Uh, and uh, with uh, different components that cover different aspects of your API management journey. Specifically, uh, when we say everyone likes to build the platforms, uh, but the because platforms are great, they cover all use cases, um, and sometimes developers are to kind of like get lost in 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 this kind of like uh, the architectural BS diagrams. Um, today we're going to be focusing on gateway side of things um, and uh, how we can provision, how we can enable the plugins, configure plugins. So we're going to focus on a data plane, what's we call like a, um, the gateway setting for API management, um, how we can con control and configure. And at the end, I also show how those things can be replicated through automation. Automation is important. Um, and that's all, that's it. that's it. That's that's all my slides. Before I join with Connect, I would uh, like to give you intro into how Quonk Gateway essentially deployed. When you are a developer, you really want to care about two simple things. One thing is your Quant Gateway instance and configuration of your Quant uh, Gateway. That will include um, your services, your routes, your plugins. Simplest possible way how you can deploy or developers deploy Quant is by defining this declarative configuration. Enable Quant is what we called a DBLS mode because this mode doesn't have any database here. That's my ribbon that will be um, explaining what happens on this slide. So with this, uh, in con uh, declarative configuration, we will have our services configured. We have our routes configured and plugins configured. If we need to update this, we need to submit this new file to config uh, admin API. Rest of the admin API endpoints will be available for read only. So this is kind of like an immutable, um, immutable environment, suitable for development, suitable for integration testing, and suitable for some of the corner cases that uh, we develop inside the Quonk. And we're using this, for example, in Quonk Ingress Controller, which our, which is our a management layer uh, for Kubernetes. If you if you use this, um, just do a thumbs up a thumbs up in uh, in the slide if you're using the uh, Kong Ingress controller right now. Uh, 
Now, many developers, maybe operators, may, many people like to use our admin API to configure services because uh, think about this. With this uh, YAML, you have only one file. If you need to just change something in the service, you need to resubmit this configuration. You need to update this. So um, it would be great if you will have um, admin API that allows you to do this incrementally. So that's why we're running Kong in our uh, so-called a traditional mode. So with traditional mode, we introduce a database. Uh, database will have a persistence layer for our API in our configurations. All these things will be stored inside database. And admin API will enable access to those services through admin API. So you will be able to do mutations. You will be able to create service, delete service. And um, uh, after restart, you will be able to configure, um, uh, uh, rehydrate this configuration. More importantly, you will be able to use multiple instances of Kong Gateway with the same configuration. Even though you still need to have, this is kind of like a clustered mode, but instead, if you need to like route traffic, you still need to have a load balancer in front. You might even have, you know, uh, the, if you go in fully meta, we can have a Kong gateway in front that will be configured with the <clears throat> uh, Kong YAML file. And after that will be load balancer between those, uh, those nodes. However, this is pretty cool. This is something that many people are doing. This is something that uh, many, uh, uh, this, is, this is why it's called traditional deployment. Um, and this traditional deployment can be extended by um, introducing a few more components. Uh, we do have a Kong manager for uh, UI and for managing things, and they can use same database uh, developer portal for publishing the services and enabling the services for, for other uh, users. And now we can start seeing uh, dependency on the database. Database becoming a bottleneck, and because our gateways need to go there and get the configuration, if configuration was changed through the Kong manager uh, with this database, there will be some time, a little bit of time that happens between the changes will be pulled back into configuration. So there would be some of the um, eventual consistency. That's for my um, distributed system folks, eventual consistency for configuration on the Quant. Now, and this is the moment where a couple of years ago, we turned things around. We turned things around and introduced this um, configuration that we called hybrid mode. In the hybrid mode, Quonk Gateway is not connected to this database. It's not connected to database, but it's connected to another Quonk instance that will have different role. We separated the role of data plane that will be responsible for pushing you, you pushing traffic through your data plane. And your control plane, it's also another instance of Quonk, that will be responsible for updating configuration, admin API, uh, syncing database, when you change something in the control plane, control plane will push it down to different environments. Drastically increases complexity of the system, but increases uh, developer productivity because you don't need to worry as a developer, you deploy your data plane, connect to your control plane, you get configuration and you're good to go. And your Kong manager, your developer portal, all the things will work. Someone in the comments might ask, <laughs> Victor, but what if I want to have configurations um, that will be depend on environment. Say I do have a, my uh, testing environment for Kong and I have my uh, staging environment. I do have my QA environment. I do have my pre-production production environment. How I can do this? So with this configuration, things becoming slightly easier than it would be uh, with the previous use cases because um, you need to you know replicate this database. However, you still have this um, situation when you need to migrate this uh, configuration between um, uh, between environments uh, with declarative configuration in tools like um, like deck you will be able to say create this environment in one place you can dump this configuration after that propagate this configuration to another environment however with the hybrid mode you need to um, manage your environments say QA you need to basically replicate all this thing into different environments and this is where uh, Connect comes into play and uh, solving some of the some of the pains for developers where, so first of all, you don't need to maintain database. We're maintaining database. We're managing the con configuration layer. And through this uh, fantastic feature, I think it's a, 
one of the revolution features that our customers are loving um, is to have a runtime groups where you can segregate different environments. So in this case, it can be Kong data plane that runs on your QA, and this one will be runs on your prod. More importantly, with this configuration, you can also scale, scale this environment not only within um, different uh, different environments dimension, but also in geographical dimensions. You um, we support a geo distributed deployment of the kind of you can segregate them uh, based on geographies because you know as the developers will like to build our stuff. However. Uh, the boring things like uh, governments and the borders and uh, local regulations come into play. So we need to uh, obey those things when we're developing an application. We develop an application in the US, but if we're processing data of users who are in the European Union, we need to um, store this data in the European Union. So that's why um, this comes into play as well. So what do you need to do? Without Connect, you probably will go and uh, you know deploy this in somewhere in, in, in the European Union. With Connect, you just need to enable another geography and uh, you're good to go. So as of now, we we have a fully managed a control plane that we're going to be focusing today. So control plane, we will be operating against control plane and control plane will be responsible for shipping our configuration to our data plane. Let me know in the comments if because this is the point where I'm switching the gears and going full in code and uh, demonstrations and all these things. If something that I just said uh, is not quite clear or you want to have a, some sort of clarification about these architectures. In general, again, you need to remember we have only um, four, four deployments. DBLS mode, simple as possible for development. Um, and uh, in this case, your Kong YAML will be your source of truth. With traditional mode, you have a database, you have admin API, you can configure services, you can have multiple gateways con connected to the same database. They can share configuration. One, conf one, um, one of the gateways can change this configuration. Another gateway will pick up this eventually. With hybrid mode, we have a control plane that will be responsible for consistent configuration and pushing back all this configuration to, um, to our data planes. And with connect, we have a uh, multi-tenant, fully decentralized, fully managed control plane that allows you to configure not only different environments, but um, you can have a like really, um, um, not sophisticated, but really complex uh, deployments, like uh, really heterogeneous. You can have a deployment in Docker and, and, and in Kubernetes, and they can be the same, control, uh, same runtime group and same configuration will be shared. Yes, uh, John Williams asking the fantastic question. So when we're running this in the hybrid mode, how we can manage a multiple environments? So in this particular case, you need to replicate uh, deployment, maybe smaller scale, uh, but uh, still you need to replicate the deployment across multiple different environments. So for QA, you will have your own um, installation of control plane. For QA database, you need to have a, um, a QA database to store the con, and uh, obviously you need to have a um, QA, um, QA uh, the, the gateways. Um, you can use, if you're running this on-prem, you still can use um, uh, something that we call uh, workspaces to segregate the services. But um, the, the, the thing like uh, runtime groups, you can get uh, as of now uh, only in, in Connect. Now let's dive in into this demo. So I have a Patrick comment to clarify in hybrid mode, data plane does not have DB and must connect it to control plane. Absolutely right. So with the hybrid mode, um, one of the processes that Kong binary can take on is either data plane, control plane. You can, uh, you can configure this. And only thing that Kong gateway in this particular case will require is connection to control plane. Um, and it is it is not uh, like it is bidirectional. So when the con gateway starts, it has a configuration where to connect for control plane and how to connect this. And the rest of this stuff, can, this this thing will be um, constantly uh, updating is bidirectional. In hybrid mode, actually, think about this because the con gateway doesn't store anything. So there's no database. There's nothing. Um, it is very good um, a scenario for. Um, you know, for security reasons also. Uh, with security reasons, like if your gateway itself would be compromised, no one else will be able to access um, your, uh, your your configs um, because 
you know they're simply not not storing and the uh, only way to to connect to control plane would be you know using um key and certificate to connect because the connection between control plane and data plane is also secured using the ssh um yes thank you for this question uh, uh patrick what i would like to show you today so i'm gonna start with with simple cluster i will be running my con gateway um i will be running this in um us east i guess it's us one or es4 um i will be running this in kubernetes just simply because i want it if i will be talking um about the uh, that's my attempt to do kubernetes stuff uh, maybe it's <laughs> not right i need to i need to uh, play around with my drawings um, um this is available right now it's it's on public internet so if you want to follow along um, you will be able to do this. Um, before I do this, let me show you what we're going to be working with. So I would like to use a public API that is available. And uh, we're going to be using this um, text completions. How many of you played around with ChatGPT? Like you ask to write a uh, email for you or maybe asking questions and trying to convince it that it's, um, it's wrong on something. Um, so essentially it's done through this, uh, this framework of text completion. And it, the, when you submit the prompt, um, it will uh, use the information that it uh, trained on to provide the response. And they, they expose this as a REST API. There is a uh, REST API that you can play around. And this is what we're going to be using today. So I'm going to be using, I wanted to um, to provide access to this thing uh, to my developers inside my organization. However, I don't want them to register on this thing, have um, like put their credit card. We're doing this centralized way. So I already provide this. Only thing that they will need is to connect to my, um, to my gateway and I will be able to control who can see which, uh, which things. Since I mentioned pricing, it's very important because in the past, um, in the past, we like to talk about when we're talking about performance, we like to talk about things like um, optimized algorithms, uh, maybe faster networks, like putting the faster hard drives and faster CPUs. These days, if you want to have a optimized performance, you just need to swipe credit card much harder uh, because you will get a say, more powerful instances if you're running this in cloud, in the things that you're running in AWS, for example. Uh, same here. With, um, with ChatGPT, we have a different pricing based on uh, the quality of model, of the, uh, the model that um, will be responsible for generating text. Let me show you how the uh, quality of life changes if we're changing different models. So we're going into this, um, the, uh, I'm using this chat GPT uh, completions uh, URL. So uh, we'll be trying to do different models. Uh, I'm going to start with the simple model called a ADA and see how this uh, will be able to work. And here I would like to ask what is con? And when I submit this question, Response time is uh, 900 milliseconds, so it's relatively fast. But we're getting an uh, interesting response here. It's fast, but response would be Kong is computer game played by zones on Tatooine Planet player armor. Kong is computer game played in zones Tatooine Planet. Interesting. So if we're going to be, say, like, a, okay, if I want to pay more for a better model, uh, let's see, there's another model called Babbage. Um, and uh, when I run this, and uh, Babbage response time, I guess I guess some sort of caching happened. Um, it says Kong is a character uh, and the mascot of Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay, but not exactly what we expected, uh, right? So let's go with the more advanced model, like called Curie. All right, Kong is a software company that creates video games and other software products. Uh, it close to uh, that software company and other things, but uh, it's not that close with the uh, <laughs> Mario and Donkey Kong games. So 
Now let's use DaVinci, which is a more advanced model, more um, more sophisticated model, and this model used inside ChatGPT. So to to um, when you're writing this conversational chat, um, it uses a same DaVinci model for generating text responses. So let's see what uh, DaVinci would say for us. Now check this out. It took us almost like a three seconds to get the response, but I like this response much better. Kong is open source API management platform that provides reliable and publishing, consuming, managing APIs, provides simple, efficient way to route secure. So by simply switching different models, making like smarter models, and as you can see, more expensive models. So in this case, it's a 10 times more expensive than Curie. Um, Hopefully, like, let's see if I will be able to call it 10 times, like Curie model. Um, it's still, still stick with the, um, with this. Um, okay, what is um, the best, the best cloud, uh, cloud native AP uh, gateway? and uh, why it is Kong. Okay, let's see da what Da Vinci would tell us. Kong is the, is the most popular and powerful cloud native gateways. Okay, enough said. Uh, let's see if a Curie model, if I um, adjust my request, maybe Curie model would be good enough for us. See? So I was able to um, uh, tweak my prompt to get a uh, uh, <laughs> slightly interesting, uh, slightly different response here. Um, so we're gonna be focusing on this one, okay. We're gonna focus in on these two models. Since um, our developers, we want to expose this API to our developers, and we know that the two models will be different, um, we need to provide the way how they can consume it. And uh, most importantly, we want to restrict this. One way to do this would be a, a uh, first of all, let's create a service. So this is the My Connect platform. So inside My Connect platform, I, I selected North America. We'll switch to Europe <clears throat> afterwards. And uh, one of the things that we will be dealing with, this is our control plane. And inside our um, uh, control plane, I will be seeing different runtime instances. It's our data planes, instances of Kong running. So a uh, few, few uh, Kong data planes instances are running here. Uh, my the one that I will be using right now deployed latest and greatest version as of today maybe tomorrow it will change um, that runs inside uh, inside Kubernetes and 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 this um, this Quonk gateway instance is available for me if I will go and say that's my URL if you just hit this URL uh, right now you will get a classic conk response saying that uh, uh, response not, uh, the request not found. So nothing is configured, it's running by itself, nothing is there. Since it's a bi-directional communication, I will be able to do configuration in my connect and push this configuration into my, um, in my um, data plane. So what I want to start with this, I'm create the service, uh, create new service version, uh, version number just to be one, and, and create it in, in runtime group. So this is important. So this service will be configured inside my runtime group that is marked as default. Once again, let me uh, create this and I will show you. In runtime manager, I do have a default runtime group that will consist of two Kong nodes. One node is 2.8, it's very old and it's compatible, but it's still connected. Um, maybe there's some of the some of the features will not be available, but I'm configuring this control, uh, this data plane, and this service will be available uh, will be available here as soon as I will deploy it. Now I'm going with this version one and adding implementation. So I will call this open AI um, and URL will be here. We know this URL from this. We'll grab it. Uh, click next and uh, I will create the route, just the first route for let's say DaVinci for my routes and the path would be the Vinci. And I'll create this. Uh, what was the error? 
upstream URL, HTTPS completion. Let's see if um, if I need to do HTTPS. Okay, uh, and I create and uh, what is this uh, service? Let's see. Open AI. Will I be able to create this one? Okay, so one more time. So it was able to implementation is there. So let's see if the traffic will go go in. So if I go to this, this is the address of my Kong. Let's see if we will be able to send. Um, no routes match, meaning that we doing something. I'm doing something wrong. Let's see. Let's start over. Uh, delete with one. And open a app. Let's do start start from scratch. Delete service. Meanwhile, question: How the service hub different from runtime service in Quant Connect? So it's a very good question. So essentially, inside this runtime, you will also have a gateway services. And one of the things that uh, I will be able to do is to have um, configure service inside this particular gateway. Service hub will be used for internal to discover those services and to publishing this in the portal. Let's try this one. Open AI. This is our URL. And uh, let's see if I'll be, be able to create the service. Okay. Service was created. Uh huh. Now I will be able to create route. Let's see. I can name route Da Vinci. And in this case, uh, this Da Vinci, Da Vinci route. Okay, now if I'll try this, uh, let's see what is our our Kong says in terms of like why Kong cannot get this configuration. I'm going into this um, in this config, so let's see. It's always always great for me to see if the um, uh, runtime instance if my runtime is in sync. So it should be in sync. And this route should be configured. Let's send this one more time. Perfect. Now it works. It took some time to uh, to push down this configuration from control plane to data plane. Now it says you need to provide a model parameter. So since um, uh, I can I can do this and put the DaVinci model in every request, I don't want to do this. I want to. Um, Provide simplicity for people. They know if they go and hit this Da Vinci endpoint, and uh, only thing that I want them to do is provide a prompt. So I can use this uh, Quonk Gateway functionality to enable this. With this, I'm going to go ahead and adding plugin, plugin called Request Transformer. So what I wanted to do every time when we are hitting this endpoint, we want to append body to include the model. So in this case, I would say add uh, to body. Just uh, when I submit this to OpenAI model and uh, particular text. In uh, I'll just copy paste it from my uh, previously prepared uh, from my previously prepared thing. So um, I'm adding here, and if someone decides to tinker with this, uh, with this uh, the endpoint, I want to also prevent this. So in this case, I will go and replace body. So every time when someone will try to fix the model here, it always will be switching this to uh, DaVinci. Now with this, so when I go and just hit DaVinci, see just a prompt, and uh, Max Tokens defines the how many you know the the words it will return. And we're waiting, and now we have a response. So right now, um, I'm including open ID key with my request, but this open ID key will be can be included as a part of gateway, so you don't have to do this. Let's do the same thing for uh, for our uh, query model. So we're doing the query model. We're doing with this, and we're going with the query uh, query model, and I enable plugin. Also, let's do uh, request request transformer um, body. Um, uh, we're doing query. What was the model? 
uh, we go in here, Curie is 01. And you can find the list of the models inside the um, inside Open AI, open, uh, open AI replace body. So now, now if I will go ahead and key, key, kick this one, I need to provide the parameter model. Um, in a few seconds, okay, so looks like I messed up with the configuration. Let's see if I um, uh, would do model append body and config replace body. That should should work. Let's try it one more time. So response actually came in from um, from Kong. We do incorrect URL. We could not part a request. Likely you aren't using HTTP library correct. Open API spec JSON payload. So let's take a look uh, what kind of kind of problem we might have here. So I'll just do header. And let's see what kind of errors we might have here. Um, anything here? Strange because it uses the same uh, the same configuration that I used. Add and replace. Maybe copy paste uh, errors happens uh, with the best of us. Okay. And uh, config replace uh, replace body. Yes, correct. I include bearer. I include the application JSON. Um, let's stick with DaVinci, and uh, I will figure out what's not uh, what was not working with the um, what was not working with the open uh, open air. Um, the cool thing is that you know if something is not working, I came uh, here prepared. So this is where I already have uh, my um, the 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 deck configuration file that allows me to quickly um, get into the point where everything is working. So uh, let's do this. So I'm going into deck, and what I can do, uh, I can do this deck sync, uh, and um, Connect runtime group is gonna be default, and I will be using my first file mm, that's called one service route and con. So what it will do, it ditched all the bad configuration that I had or might have in 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 my in my config. So it just showed what it replaced and replaced with the things that I already configured. So it also includes some of the uh, plugins that I pre-configured. So we can go ahead and try 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 try, try this one. So let's see if our DaVinci thing is still working. So I can go ahead and just click here. DaVinci model came by. Um, it goes through the Kong and our Kong is open source gateway. Now with Curie, let's see. Um, yeah. And if I will do something like, um, what was the what was the request for uh, for Kong and for completion, there would be this one. Um, and also we'll do this one. So let's see if Curie model will be up and running. Cool. So um, the two things are working, so that's fine. So now we do have a two, serv uh, two routes uh, inside this gateway service. We also publish this gateway service inside this open, API, open AI. Now what I can do, I also go to publish this on the portal. And in order to make this even uh, much more cooler, what I can do, I just like do upload the spec. So I do have a open AI, open API spec. So I'll upload this here and it will be ra uh, rendered on my uh, portal. So if I go to developer portal, I have a developer portal enabled. And right now I using customization and I use custom URL. Um, so devportal.us.kongbuilders asking registration. So this is where um, I have uh, my developer account registered with this uh, with this portal, it's called Victor Connect Developer, and uh, I can access to this one, and I'll see what kind of services uh, available for me. I see this OpenAI service that uh, that is available. So this is the OpenAI service that available. I will be able to um, uh, the, uh, register my applications soon with this. So the next thing is that um, I want to show you that you can configure this stuff 
um, with this runtime manager. We go in with default. We go in with the plugins. Uh, plugins can be also enabled for global. So I do have a global plugin configured, and it was coming from um, um, coming from my configuration file that I had before. Always have <laughs> always have a backup plan because the live demonstration can go wrong. So with this um, this uh, this plugin allows me to put um, lambdas uh, or like a Lua code inside uh, inside my 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 um, my plugin and execute any particular particular code. In this case, what I'm running, I'm adding an extra header that shows where this uh, response comes from. So if I look look the header and says um, upstream host. And I know that uh, the it comes the API call comes from this uh, request. How we can prevent people from doing stupid things? We can do um, we can enable um, um, sorry rate limiting on the query, um, and I can go ahead and say plugins, add plugin, rate limiting, and just the regular ones. Uh, we will just do um, limit by IP, uh, config 60 minutes and size, what is it? Um, 60 seconds. Let's do 60 second window, not the not the me not the minute. And uh, again, the configuration should be based on window size, sliding window, and based on config seconds, 10 requests per seconds, 10. Uh, it's always um, great to see what is going on with the response. Let's see. Refresh. Um, when I click save, let's see what, what's the error. At least second, minute, hour, day, month. I, I, have, I have this config in seconds. So 10 uh, minutes. Where's minute? Say 10 requests per minute, it's going to be a uh, validation error. Okay. Config seconds. Something is not right with the UI today. Okay. So now I put this rate limiting on my query. Um, and uh, when I send this, I should be able to get a, a rate limiting. So have a the, the rate limiting uh, is, is working. So the, the simple request, um, uh, simple request transformer is configured here. Now, what I wanted to do here is to have a more granular control over DaVinci. Some of the applications that will be using DaVinci uh, will be in production, some of the in development, and I want to have a rate limiting for DaVinci endpoint that based on a developer need. So this is where the application registration comes into play. So when I go into my service hub, I see my open API, I will be able to enable application registration. Why it is important. So um, I want to enable my developers who use this <clears throat> inside my um, uh, in my side my organization. So they will be using this API. And also I would like to manage the access to this API. So uh, if I'm going as a developer in my service catalog, I can find my um, my applications. I have a two applications for one for production and for for development. Let me do this bigger. I will be able to do application registration. So let's say inside my production, I do have a, some um, application that I will be using in production. In this application, uh, I would like to connect to my Open AI register for Open AI request access, and I will be able to configure uh, plugins here. I'm going into my OpenAI. Uh, where's my routes? My routes say DaVinci route. So DaVinci route, I want to slice and dice and provide the access to this one based on um, user credentials. So I have a test environment and production environment. Um, so inside here, I'm going into my application, say my application test application and also I would like to register this for service so I will be able to see those things are available here for me now for my plugin uh, I would like to add uh, to uh, one more plugin 
before that, I will go in into my runtime manager and um, for default and consumers, I will create a two consumer groups. One consumer group, I will call it um, kind of gold. So I would provide the, the, the maximum level of accessing this API, say like a thousand, a hundred requests per, or like a 200 requests per minute. Select consumers. So this is going to be, so when I enable application registration, uh, it automatically created a consumer for this API for, for me. So this is my, uh, I guess this is the production one. So let's, let's confirm this. It has this ID 92.8. And if I go to my production application, where's my catalogs, my apps, go into production application, and 92, it's my production application. So every time when the consumer will come with credentials with this ID, I will be able to override configuration for a rate limiting. So let's save it. And I would say window size 60, limit number. So it's going to be like a, what, like 20 requests. And another consumer group that I will add, just call it silver. And in this case, I will add this guy. And with this limit configuration, we will have five. So every time when I come with developer credential to um, DaVinci uh, route, I will be able only get five requests. So in order to configure this, I'm going into my, go in my test application, generate credential, test app um, for webinar. So I'm just generate this one. I got the key. And for my, for my insomnia, what I do is manage environments and go to base environment. So this is my test key that I will be using. And I can film a copy. Okay, it's copied. Now, in the, for the uh, for my route DaVinci, now I need to configure um, rate limiting advanced. So rate limiting advanced plugin, I have this configuration called enforce consumer groups, meaning that it will um, the find a correlation gold and silver. And based on the key that will be included inside the header, um, I would be able to route and get different ser service level agreement. Um, just config limit, let's do just for, uh, for test. Window size 60, it's gonna be fixed. Now, so this is the moment of truth. <clears throat> let's see. So now I'm hitting my, uh, let's make sure there's now no API key. So I've disabled this API key. So, and, and I sent this request. So unauthorized because API key was not found in the request. And now I enable this API key and send invalid credentials. Let's um, generate, let's, let's test, uh, let's test if the test thing works because I generated for test um so let's take a look at headers my uh, uh, i have a, a request limit of five meaning that based on the key gateway was able to correlate a this api key to consumer that was registered uh through developer portal and uh, configure this rate limit for developer portal, uh, for a, dev a developer uh, developer key. Now, if I'm going into my application, let's 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 fix production. Generate credential. Call it uh, prod app for webinar. And I click generate, copy and configure. Um, and inside my manage environment based environment in production. Um, and here we will replace with production key. So what I'm expecting to see 20, uh, 20 request limit. I replace with production key 
And uh, yes, so huge success. Um, <clears throat> now, last but not least, the one last thing that I wanted to quickly uh, talk about is how we can um, move this into different environments. So now I'm running this in the North America, and I will quickly switch to um, to runtime uh, manager that will be running inside a European Union, and my runtime is also uh, deployed there. So right now there's no services is deployed here, but I will be able to do this. Say, I have this configuration that I already have in my, um, I can just do deck uh, dump. So I can a uh, dump configuration that I have in my uh, runtime group connect for US. So this is my configuration that I just um, uh, uh, requested from US. And what I can do, I can just do deck sync. Um, file is going to be the same, runtime group. And now I also need to do um, uh, connect address. So now I just need to specify different a um, API for our control plane. So I will push this uh, configuration to say uh, deck sync. All these things were created in my um, in my environment in Europe. So let's see if I will be able to. Um, get access to say to Da Vinci endpoint. So because I didn't enable application registration, it didn't took into account my rate limiting that was configured based on consumer group. Uh, I can go and do this, but uh, rate limiting based on the global route still works. So uh, I think it is uh, it is a huge uh, huge progress. So we can we can create this one. So. That was it. It was a lot of things today. So first of all, I introduce you to uh, the concept of the, um, the the connect as a as your like management platform. Um, I explain you different uh, deployment configurations. I, I showed you how you can configure external service um, and pass um, uh, different body elements. I, I we modified the request on the fly, but including the model numbers. I showed you how we can enable application registration and have a developer portal configured and uh, developers can register to, to service and get the keys and you, based on this key we can provide different access to the service. And after that I showed you how I can just simply took configuration from one place and replicate it to another configuration without me to go in and uh, doing this manual again. So I think it was pretty impressive. With this, um, as always, my name is Victor Gamov and have a wonderful day. Thank you.